This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today we'll be young detectives working together to solve neighborhood mysteries. We'll be trying to find the motive, suspect, location, crime, and object. Spy Club is a cooperative game for two to four players, ages 10 and up, and takes about 45 minutes to play, and is published by Renegade Game Studios alongside Foxtrot Games. Spy Club is designed to be a five game mosaic campaign where you unlock new rules and other elements that change the game every time you play, but you can still always play the single game all by itself, and if you decide to do a campaign later, you can do that. We're gonna take a look. I'm gonna show you how this game works as an individual standalone game and a campaign game without any spoilers, so here we go. The object of the game is to work cooperatively to solve all five aspects of the case. Motive, suspect, location, crime, and object. And you'll solve an aspect of the crime by getting five pieces of evidence confirmed of the same type. In this case, these all match in color and logo for object. So in this case, we would have solved the aspect of object. You're trying to do this for all five aspects of the case. Over the course of the game, players will be taking turns in clockwise order. And in those turns, you'll be going through three phases. You'll be using actions, you'll be refilling some cards, and then you'll be moving the suspect. And starting with that first player, they'll be able to use up to three actions. And since you're trying to confirm five of the same clues of any aspect of the case, we'll do that first. So one of the actions you could take is confirm. And you could take any of the three cards that's in your hand and you can add it to the center row below the board. Now there is a cost and ideas for this. Now, wherever your focus token is, if you're using the card just above that, it costs you zero ideas. But for every card further off from that you go, you add one idea that you have to spend. For example, if I wanted to use the garbage man and confirm that, since it's two spaces from my focus token, it would cost me two ideas. At the beginning of the game, I only have one idea. So on my first action, I could either confirm this without spending one, or I could confirm the game piece by spending one because it's one away from that focus token. Now you can put it into any empty slot that you choose, or you can exchange it with any card that's already there. So let's say I wanted to put it here. I would exchange that with the Boolean card. And that Boolean card would go in the same spot that I confirmed that other card from. Another possibility is to shift focus. And that is to move your focus token to any of the other cards in your hand. Then you'll gain one idea for each card in your hand that matches the aspect of your new focus card. In this case, I only have one object, so I get one idea. However, if my hand looked like this when I moved this, I'd get two ideas. One for my aspect of the new focus card, and another one because this one matches the same aspect. There's another type of aspect cards that we haven't yet talked about. They're called distractions. They're gray like this video games card. You can shift your focus to one of these, making it your new focus card, but you never gain idea tokens for doing so. Another action is called investigate. This allows you to flip any number of your clue cards once. Now you can flip your clue cards in any order, and one at a time, and you can decide after each flip if you want to continue flipping. For example, I don't want this distraction card, so I'm going to flip it. Hey, hey, we have another object. And maybe I want to flip bullying, hoping to find another object there. Ooh, I found a prank. And let's just say I decide to stop flipping. However, let me just show you what that fourth possible option is for an action. It's called Scout. You can draw one clue card among the incoming ones. Now, those ones are all here. All three of these, including the one in the card tray, are all incoming clues. Now to draw that card, you have to spend a certain amount of ideas displayed on the play card above that. So this one does not cost me any, all the way up to two. So let's say I spent those ideas, and those always go to the supply, and I take this card here. Now you can either put it in an empty spot in your hand if you have one, or you can choose to discard any card and place it in that spot, remembering never to flip the card when doing this. Now, after completing up to those three actions, you go to the refill phase. Then you'll go to phase three, which is moving the suspect. You're going to take the top movement card and then flip it over on the board right here. Now, two things could possibly happen. One, it shows just the suspect, and it's gonna be connected to one of the numbers on the previous card, or in the first round to the board here. And this shows you it's connected to a one. 
This means that suspect pawn is going to move one, and they always move clockwise. And in this case, it's over the aspect of crime. And so you look on the board to see which event is triggered by that. For crime, you discard the two rightmost incoming clues and refill. So in this case, we would discard these, and we would refill these as normal. And if it's any of the other ones, you just do as they say on the board. When moving the suspect, another possibility can happen. So here, the suspect is going to move three, like I just showed you before. But if it has this logo on it that has an arrow up and a number, then you'll move the escape marker. So the escape marker would move towards the escaped. If it ever gets there, the game's over and you have lost. Now after that player has used their up to three actions, refilled and moved the suspect, it'd be the next player clockwise turn. However, there are some additional teamwork bonus activities that you can do throughout your turn that I'll cover now. On your turn, as long as you've not yet used your final action, you can carry out one or more teamwork bonuses with other players whose focus card is of the same aspect of yours. In this case, these two players have their focus card on the object, the same aspect, so they can do some teamwork bonus activities together. One of them is to get advice. You can take any number of ideas from another player. And in this case, whenever you're doing these teamwork bonuses, the players involved should be agreeing with this. The other thing you could do is compare notes, and that's trading cards. So in this case, since we have the same aspect on our focus, we can trade cards, and you can even have that player trade a card that was their focus card. Now, of course, when doing this, uh, they have to both agree as well. As soon as there's five clue cards of the same aspect type in the center row, you've solved the corresponding aspect of the case. Now, you might want to pause and make note of how many actions that player has left, because they'll be taking them after we do some of these next steps. To identify which clue card is the solution, you find the symbol in the most recent movement card, and you look for that symbol here, and that is the solution. In this case, it's lipstick. Also notice that even though we have five of the same aspect, we do have a duplicate here as lipstick, and that's okay as long as you have five of the same aspect. So you would set this solution off to the side of the board, and you would put the rest of these in the discard pile. Keep in mind, just because we've solved object, we still need to solve the crime, location, suspect, and motive, and you can only solve each aspect once each game. If you solve all five aspects of the case, you have one. There's four different ways to lose. One is if the escape marker gets to escaped. The next is being out of ideas when there's not enough ideas remaining to remove from the game when required to do so by an event. Another is being out of time when you don't have a movement card to draw at the end of a player's turn. And the final way is being clueless, where you don't have enough incoming clue to fill the player's hands. Now, if you were playing your first game as the first part of the campaign, you had set up cards three and four, and they would have been unlocked and flipped over after you had solved the first case's aspect, and at the end of the game, you would follow the instructions on the back of those. At the end of each case in the campaign, you'll have the opportunity to record one new aspect of the master case, and that master case is going to have one aspect in common with the case that you just finished. So let's say of the five different aspects, these were the cards of each of the aspects that we had found and we successfully finished the case. In this case, you would select any one of these to be that new aspect of the master case. So let's say we select the diner. Now, next to the case number that this is in this campaign, you would write down the aspect type, in this case location, and the solution name, in this case diner. You then score points. You'll earn five points if you recorded the new aspect in the master case, and you'd earn three points for each of the aspects that you currently solved. So let's say instead of finding all five of those, we actually found these three before we ended the game. We'd get five points for identifying a new aspect and nine points for finding three things for a total of 14 points. Now, optionally, you can go right into the next case of that campaign right away in the same session, and you'd reset all the normal game components, but you would not reset the campaign deck. However, you don't need to play multiple cases of a campaign in a single sitting. There's bags that are given in the game, and you can use these to put together that each character has their own bag, or they put their character in any campaign-specific cards to them. And then there's a general bag that you can put all the generalized campaign cards. When you start a new game in the campaign, the first thing you'll do is unlock new content. Now, if you remember, you selected one card that was part of the master case from the last game. In this case, we chose the diner. Now, if you look on the campaign card index, you'll see next to our diner, it says 122. You would then grab that card number 122 from the campaign deck and follow the instructions on the front of it. Now, generally speaking, the campaign cards in the bottom right-hand corner might have an arrow, and this tells you to flip the card when you're done reading, or it might have a lock, which means you don't flip it until it tells you to. 
Now on the bottom left, it might have other cards that you need to unlock after reading through that specific card. And some of those might have a star next to it, and that just means that that card can be unlocked from other cards within the campaign deck, meaning you might get go to get that card and it might not be there, and that's okay because it's probably already out. Now, if you're playing with players that have already played a case in this campaign, they don't need to select a new character, they can keep the character they've played already. However, if you add a new player, allow them to select a character the same way as during the original setup, because you can bring new people in and out of the campaigns. Now, at the end of the five game campaign, you're going to give your team a letter grade based on that score. You simply add up the scores of the five different games within that campaign, and you look at the sliding chart here, and you give yourself a grade. All right, there is Spy Club. First of all, the art. Oh my gosh, this art is gorgeous and really draws you in. There's lots of details on the cards. You notice the rain coming down on the garbage truck and the person's taking a nap and there's a little cat snuggled with them. Lots of detail. The art just really draws you in. The graphic design is fantastic. Uh, the icons are all clear. The colors are clear. Everything just looks very polished. The mechanisms are very smooth. This game is fluid. The pacing is good. Uh, it feels like this game has been being developed for a long time because uh, I don't know how long it was, but man, did it feel streamlined. They, they just trimmed all the fat off this game. It just really, everything that needs to make the game work is there. And of course, adding everything else with the campaign stuff that I go over later, but nice streamlined mechanisms. I love how in this game, you're really trying to manage these double-sided cards. Uh, you've got cards and you can't flip them over unless you take an action or do something to do that. And you're trying to figure out which cards are where. Some of the cards, like the, the yellow objects, there's, there's lots of them all the way down to red where there's not that many. You're trying to manage it. Oh, if we use this for that, then we won't have this for this later. Uh, but you're also not only managing it for the different solutions and which ones you're going for and working together like that, but you're also working on them a lot with trying to stop specific suspect events from triggering where it's like, oh, well, if you flip this one, then oh, it's going to probably be at this card, this card or this card if we swap that card then if they get here then it will be a distraction and so there's lots of really cool things about these double-sided cards how they work where your focus is uh, spending more or less depending on where that focus is and then teaming up with other players uh, and, and that's the next thing is that those teamwork bonuses where it's like oh I can move here which would get me some ideas and then I could do this and we'll be on the same focus so you and I can share ideas you and I can share cards and it's really big to unlock those types of things uh, so it's just a lot of great mechanisms put together in this co-op game. Uh, I like those distractions, those gray cards, you know, because they're bad for you when you're trying to get cards because you're, you're trying to get cards to get into the solution. But those, those pesky gray cards are stinky. They, you know, they stink and they, they, they clog up your hand. But on the other hand, they're actually good to have sometimes because if the suspect lands on those when he moves, then, you know, nothing happens. Even the, the, the thief gets gets uh, distracted. So it's really cool how those are like good but bad and sometimes you want them, sometimes you don't. And you can massage them to get those in the right time and the right place. Uh, now this game is very puzzly. I love puzzly style games and this definitely is one of those things where you're trying to figure out a puzzle. In every game, even if you were just to play the single standalone game multiple times, the game can be played many times without getting sick of this game because it's it's got a lot of replayability just baked into the design of it as to which cards come up, cards are double-sided, all those things I mentioned, working together, different things are going to come up and different cards are going to come up in different orders, different things are going to be start happening with the thief that might end the game. So the puzzle of this game is awesome, even in the basic game. So let me go into a little bit of the mosaic system. Now this system, uh, now when I had read about it, I kind of understood what it was, but I wasn't exactly sure what was similar to other games, what was new. And even after reading the rule book, you kind of have to play through the campaign to see. But since I've done that uh, through a whole campaign, I'm going to kind of talk about this. So this system itself, there's 40 different modules you can unlock, which if you unlock a new one every game, and so each campaign is five games long. And with these campaigns, you can sort of, you know, uh, be, be with different people or same people. You can, you can save that campaign and start another campaign with a different group if you want. You can, you know, so it's very flexible. But even if you unlocked a new one every single game, which won't always happen uh, as you get further and further into the campaign, you can basically play 10 uh, full campaigns, basically 40 games before you're done unlocking things, which is a ton of content. And so I, the, the things I really like this, I, I say that this is sort of like in between a game called Fabled Fruit 
and Pandemic Legacy. And I know those two, those two are very different, uh, but you know, Pandemic Legacy obviously is this big, huge legacy game with lots of story into it, <clears throat> different things unlock, and you might unlock things different times than other people, but it's a legacy game. So the downsides of that are, you pretty much have to play with the same people the entire campaign, which is hard to do. You start tearing up, it's not replayable, which is not as good, but then you have the Fabled system. It was called Fabled Fruit, it came out from two, uh, through off games and stronghold games and it was like this game where it could be reset and it's not destructive and you could play it over and over you could play through the whole campaign and you could add people or subtract people you could save things or run others and that, a lot of that is in spy club as well but in fabled fruit uh the, the puzzle comes out sort of in a linear fashion meaning if you start a campaign the cards are always going to come out in the same way now how you play different cards will go away and the puzzle does evolve and the game will play different every time you play it where this takes that to another level, where it is you're unlocking things almost like a legacy game, but it's not a legacy game. It still has all the great things that the Fabled system brought, which was replayability, changing campaigns, saving campaigns, uh, uh, bringing different people new in and out, and it has all that, but then it has that whole legacy style thing where I'm gonna play a campaign of five games, and I could see five completely different modules than you saw and our experiences would be different. Uh, and all those modules that unlocked, they're all very cool. Some of them are cooler than others. Some of them are like full-blown mini games that you're trying to do. It's just really cool. I can't speak high enough about this mosaic system. I'm really excited. Uh, the game says two to four players. I, I, I could see that you, people are gonna want, can you play this solo? I don't see a reason why you wouldn't, you could not play this solo if you really wanted to. You may be just learning the game. Now the memory element, would be a little bit larger because you're gonna have to remember cards from multiple players, uh, but you probably could get away from playing it solo if you really wanted to, even though it's not marketed that way. Uh, anything negative about the game? Uh, number one, little nitpick, uh, a lot of times you kind of get lost with how many actions you've done because you take some bonus actions or maybe you solve a crime and you're like, how many actions did I take? Having some action counters would help. Now granted, there's enough counters in the game. You could actually use some of those mosaic counters as action counters. So very nitpick, just use some of those. It will actually help you, but it would be nice to have some included. Uh, and the last thing is, as you go on, and as I said, it takes about 40 possible games before in perfect science to unlock everything. Now, after you get probably about, and this is purely speculative because I have not played 20 games of this, I've played through a full campaign, uh, but I could see down the line after you've got the majority of them unlocked that sometimes when you solve crimes and you, you get to the end, there's nothing new to unlock. And yes, opening up the new stuff is a good thing in this game and it's one of those things you wanna do. But again, even if you've already know everything that's there, when you unlock stuff, you can still replay it because it's really about the puzzle. However, knowing that there's stuff to unlock and not being able to unlock it is a little, it could be, can be, I can see being a little bit a letdown. So I'm, I'm hoping that maybe they'll put together a designer's variant or maybe I'll just house rule this that if you get further and further into the game and you get to a solution that you cannot unlock a new thing, then I would just say, you know what, because you score a certain amount if you unlock a new thing. I'd say, okay, I don't score anything for this. I didn't unlock anything new, but from the cards that I did have from that, I am gonna take one of these that I have not unlocked and I am gonna unlock it. That way it keeps everything going fresh, you don't get let down. And then once I've unlocked all 40, I don't care if I, you know, which ones they are because I've already seen everything, but now I'm just gonna enjoy the puzzle over again. So I'm wondering if the designer will maybe come up with a house rule or designer rule that if you don't end up unlocking something, don't take the five points, but you can unlock the one of that that you did. So overall, this game blew me away. I, I, I wanted to like it, I liked the theme, I thought I was gonna like it, I did not think I was gonna like it this much. I'm gonna go on record saying I would be super surprised if this is not, it's, I know it's already gonna be on my, sh my short list for co-op game of the year for me because it's just right on my wheelhouse of the, the length of play, the amount of thinking, the replayability, the puzzliness, uh, but I'll be surprised if something comes, and something could come and beat it, but this is definitely gonna be for sure on my short list of what I think about when I think of co-op game of the year for this year in 2018. So it's obviously getting a saxophone serenade, so here we go. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.